This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is an elderly lady who has an hypermature long-standing cataract. We can see these areas of calcified specks on the anterior capsule. The plan is to do manual small incision cataract surgery with bisection of the nucleus in the bag itself and I'll be trying out the transconjunctival approach in this case. So let's begin. 1 ml of 2% lignocaine is injected into the inferior medial quadrant in the subtenant space using 26G needle. This provides adequate amount of anesthesia for the patient to be comfortable, but of course it doesn't provide any sort of akinesia. But the patient is quite cooperative in that aspect, so I expect things to go on very smoothly. The two side ports are created. The antechamber is filled with air bubble followed by trypan blue to stain the anticapsule and OVD is used to deepen the chamber. I've stabilized the globe using stabilization ring and I'm making a transconjunctival scleral groove for the scleral tunnel. I'm now using the crescent blade to make the corneoscleral tunnel and this is being done in a typical fashion. So the viscoelastic is put inside the tunnel to delineate the internal lip of the or sclerocorneal tunnel and care is ensured that the internal lip always runs parallel to the limbus. Although in this case, the distance of the internal lip from the limbus is quite long, but nevertheless, I don't expect any major issues during the surgery. The anticapsule is punctured using a 26 number needle and then the rexis is completed with a forceps. Care is taken to avoid those calcified specks and we have a decent sized rexis. Hydrodissection is not necessary. I'm just trying to tap the lens and see whether it is free from the attachment to the capsular bag because there was some evidence of uh, calcification in the capsule. OVD is put into the anterior chamber to coat the endothelium and also deepen it. The two instruments, the Chang chopper in my left hand, it goes in through the side port and the Khan pre-chopper goes in through the main incision. I prefer to first go and hook the nucleus with the Chang chopper, stabilize it and then the Dr. Sohail Khan's pre-chopper is buried deep into the nucleus just in front of the edge of the rexis in the opposite quadrant. Once I'm convinced about the depth of the pre-chopper, two instruments are being moved towards each other. Since the nucleus is quite dense, it takes some effort and the process is slightly slow before I get the crack. But point to note here was the nucleus was rotating. There is a lot of torque in place and the reason simply was that the nucleus was very dense The degree of torque is directly proportional to the density of the nucleus. That has been my observation. And the second point also would be that pre chopper has been buried sufficiently deep into the substance of the nucleus. Maybe the torque would be slightly less. Time to assess the two heminucleus and I suspect that the posterior plate must be holding on somewhere. So I'm using viscoelastic to go in and explore and I see that the posterior plate in the central part is not totally separated. So I'm using two Sinsky hooks to just go in in the groove and then gentle lateral separation maneuvers. I could just separate the two heminucleus. So not much of a difficulty. We could divide this dense nucleus into two heminucleus and now is the time to prolapse each of them out of the bag into the antechamber and then extract them out. I'm using cohesive OVD to maintain the chamber now. Using the two Sinsky hooks and the chopstick maneuver, I'm just grasping it at the two edge of the heminucleus and then gently manipulating it out of the bag. There's a lot of epinucleus and lens matter which hampers the visualization. So that's one thing which we need to be conscious of. Using a little bit of viscoelastic to just flush it away helps us to see again well. To be on the safer side, I'm just trying to enlarge the incision just a little bit. So again, under the cover of cohesive OVD, uh, using the FACO sandwich technique, that is using the vectus and the dialer, the heminucleus is gently brought out. The care has to be taken that the cut surface of the heminucleus should not touch the endothelium. That is the, the roughest part of the heminucleus. So that is what is going to traumatize the endothelium. So we need to be conscious that the dialer presses the heminucleus down 
so that the rough part of the heminucleus is away from the colon endothelium. Similarly, the second heminucleus is manipulated out of the bag and again using the similar technique of phaco sandwich, it's expressed out. So the steps where corneal endothelial damage can happen is when the rough edges of the epinucleus, they brush against the endothelium. That will happen when you're trying to remove the nucleus out of the antechamber. It can happen when the heminucleus starts to tumble or rotate. The rough edges can just scrape across the endothelium. That is one aspect which the surgeon needs to be conscious of. The rest of the steps are going to be routine. The cortex aspiration is done. and an intraocular lens is placed into the bag. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is washed out. Now because we don't have a conjunctival flap, there's no need to suture it, but I realized that the posterior edge of the conjunctival flap has actually retracted back a little bit. So I just go back and use a little bit of cautery to seal the wound. So the eye looks good. That's it, the case is done. Now these are the pictures taken about uh, three days post-op. The patient seems to be doing well. In this case of uh, nucleus division in the bag, we could see that there's definitely a certain amount of torque when you're trying to divide the nucleus. And this is torque is seen whenever we're dealing with more denser nucleus. There will be some torque. I think the only way to minimize it would be to ensure that both the instruments are engaging sufficient amount of the nucleus. That is there, then some amount of this torque can be minimized. The second aspect, which was the transconjunctival scleral tunneling, which we did, I think it was much more aesthetically pleasing. Only thing for an inexperienced surgeon, understand plane of the blade, which is dissecting and creating the tunnel, might be a little difficult. Otherwise, I think this seems to be a very good option. So I would be trying it in many more cases and letting you know in future. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.